Hey everyone, this is Walter, and I'm back here with more posts from our good friend Lucas Werner. Lucas is a creepy 43-year-old man who lives in Spokane, Washington. He actually made international news for being creepy when he hit on a young barista by leaving a note for her, forcing Starbucks to kick him out. He's still a fan of the attraction sign, in fact. I know people have been waiting for a while for an update, and the farms are finally back, so let's just get into it. This is The Horror of Lucas Werner. New posts. Lucas must be off his meds or something, because he has been popping off lately. These are some very disjointed thoughts, even for him. Guys are attracted to young women. Being a groomer is actually trying to stop adults dating who they want. It's none of your business. Yeah, don't try to groom Lucas into being into women his own age. That would be a travesty. It's funny to see women complain about creepy old men while drinking creepy aged wine and eating creepy aged cheese. Oh man, this is a new post, but we've seen this rhetoric before, years ago. Let me go find it. When you drink alcohol, you're taking age inside you. And my personal favorite, I'm old, like fine aged cheese. No doubt he smells like aged cheese too. It's amazing to see him pull out an old trick like this, hoping it'll just work this time. Think of the word incel for a minute. Involuntary celebrate. Now wait a minute. Everyone can change their weight, behavior, locations, and times and when and where they look. If we're going to get epistemological here, everything is involuntary. Everything is involuntary, taking into consideration physics and the expansion of the universe. Think if you had to deal with the infinite at an ice cream shop. That would suck. Move over, Godel. Infinity is one of those things that can exist mathematically, but not physically. Everything can change because there's space and time to move within. Nothing being voluntary definitely sounds like some pseudo-intellectual bullshit. Also, you'd think Lucas would like infinite ice cream. I mean, look at him. I'm all for people being gay, but I don't get it. I don't think you have to get something to accept it. I don't get why people enjoy hot dogs. The older I've gotten, the more I've avoided hot dogs, bologna, chicken ramen, triple chocolate cake, sweet pickle relish, which is my least favorite tried food, lentils, goat, just because it tastes like dinty more stew meat that's way overpriced, cinnamon candy and gum, imitation crab, decaffeinated coffee and soda, most rap and country music, church, being in any religious building, though some Buddhist gardens are beautiful, watching sports, paparazzi gossip, people who pry, in general, V8 tomato juice but not Campbell's, raisins, walnuts, those 1950s aspics with the mayo slathered on that gelatin, filled with cold hot dogs and green olives, gross. Zoos, taking baths, also gross. White chocolate. He has like one sentence about gay people and then just rambles on forever about the few foods that he doesn't like to eat. He's lying about not liking hot dogs too. They inevitably make their way into all of his meals every time he buys them. A black guy gave me the n-word pass. Can I sell it over Cash App for $100? I personally think it's worth a thousand dollars. This is one volatile term. Pitch it off a bridge into a riverbed and it sends a plume 300 feet high. Could kill 40 acres and a mule. One letter of it feeds a poor African family for a week. Yeah, it tastes good. It's blackened like real ass peppercorns. You can make a nice gallon of sauce out of it. Somebody told me it goes real good at family gatherings over tofu. This family of plant, animal, or whatever you called it invented rock and roll. It'll improve your pool game like your pockets were black holes to you. It grows your dingling by six inches. It'll make you as rich as Michael Jordan, but you can't have it for anything less than $100. I guess Lucas would know, he has spent quite a bit of time on the internet spamming the n-word. He has literally thought at certain points that young women were into it when he says it. Just because you're part of the first church that formed, does it mean that you're right any more than alchemy preceding chemistry or astrology preceding astronomy make alchemy or astrology correct? Not only that, your entire religion was plagiarized from previous religions. Why do you accept Jesus Christ as your savior when Horus, Addis, Mithra, Krishna, and Dionysus were worshipped before him and had eerily similar stories? You've experienced this moment a Google Plexian amount of times, but it always feels like the moment is being experienced anew as the universe reboots backward in time and boots forward in time. I don't even know what to say about this crap sometimes. He seems to be in the same frame of mind as he was when he went to college the first time and kept claiming he invented faster than light communication. If you could afford it, which was many, you'd own a slave or two when it was legal. 
Just pick an area of the world and time when slavery was legal and you were at least middle class. Most of us grew up middle class. They used to beat abolitionists and people who didn't do the religious rituals, like they all did, under threat of death. Imagine not celebrating Christmas while being served mincemeat pies by a slave. A monk might walk by with a device to rip out your tongue, growling, Atheist, at you. I have no idea what kind of a point he was trying to make about slavery here, by the way. But I know what you've all actually been waiting for. Some home cooking from the worm. Warning, some of this might be pretty gross. Like this one, where Lucas has half-cooked bacon hanging out of his mouth. Not to cast pearls before swine, but this pig was the result of 13.8 billion years of evolution, and I ate it. I like how he just gives us the age of the universe like pigs were evolving from the exact moment of the Big Bang. Behold, my latest invention. Peanut butter and peach preserves sandwich on rye with cheddar cheese. I call it the orange indictment. Yeah, I think Lucas is onto something. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches were really begging for cheese. What is he, fucking crazy? Asparagus with queso and salsa. He's like, hey, this kind of looks like hollandaise. Close enough. And what will Lucas do with the rest of the pico de gallo salsa he bought? Well, he made a sandwich out of it. Look at this mess. You know, in the army, when you're messing everything up, they'll say you're like a soup sandwich. But Lucas is all about making soup sandwiches for some reason. Pulled pork, crispy taco with cheddar, avocado, black olive, and sour cream. That is a lot of sour cream. Maguro poke. That's tuna to us. My favorite food is sashimi, a raw fish, which is in here. Apparently Lucas prepared this raw fish himself, so that sounds kind of sketchy. Went with the shrimp and a piece of pepper jack melted on top. Got ten bowls because the cheese was ten slices. Yeah, pepper jack cheese definitely belongs in shrimp ramen. And didn't he just say earlier that he doesn't like to eat chicken ramen? You know what I need when I don't know what I need? Pork sausage with cabbage mix on an English muffin. I would not have guessed that was the answer. Raw cabbage, right. One of my Satanist friends liked this. It's not bad upon never having tried it before. It's like a salty salmon. Pretty good. Etouffee in a brine. Yeah, that's all well and good, but then look at this. He put sardines in his cheddar broccoli rice aroni. That is awful. He's just never going to stop putting fish and cheese together, is he? Maybe I just don't get it because I'm not an influencer like Lucas, but I have no idea why he posts meals like this. Is this something to be proud of? Macaroni, no milk, no butter, no problem. Added sausage and half a cup of water. He has some serious skill at making food look gross. And finally, here's something I thought no one would be able to fuck up. I mean, if you're going to fry up a 24 gram of fat can of corned beef hash, you may as well do it perfect, right? Add a couple of cut up slices of cheese and two eggs. Lucas, you can't just put all that stuff in at the same time. Eggs and cheese take like no time to cook and there's so much fat here. I have no idea what this would end up like. I have literally coached guys into finding girlfriends. I'd have one too if many women weren't shitty towards me. A week ago, my friend in Green Bay was single, cruising the bars for women. He started improvising instead of sticking to the plan, but as soon as he started using the words I gave him to use, blam, finds a hot girlfriend who had sex with him that night. They're now dating, so I think I know what I'm saying. I wonder if he's still using the Hi My Name is Lucas line. That's a classic. Look at how gray and thin my hair has become. Swag or gag? Yeah, let me know in the comments. Swag or gag, everyone? I want to be inside. Your heart. What a weird way to start. The heart is the pulmonary muscle that pumps blood like an art. What have you? Sometimes enjoyed a la carte. The heart is a valve, not a pump. It keeps every organ jumped, like the brain and the lungs. It increases in intensity with drugs shaped like a dart and many other things for a lark. You can even eat it with a fork. Seduction has nothing to do with the circulatory function. That's what I'd surmise in my calculations. Then they dream up in their imagination words like bussin', but it's got nothing to do with nightly rapid eye motion catching traction. I want to be inside. Your heart. What a weird way to start. I think I'd better take a shart. That's a combination of shit and fart, but it's got nothing to do with bowel movements for a start. The pressure for my treasure trove of linguistic pleasure has nothing to do with the excretory system. It's the words we use to get to you. 
To sound so smooth, it puts you in a groove, but it's got nothing to do with reservoir preservation. It's a kick in the head without going brain dead. It's a sock in the teeth, having fuck all to do with how you tread or how you internally bled. It's the words we choose to get to you. To be so cool, you're never rude and speak your depth, while having nothing to do with caramelized words, falling on the ears of the deaf. It's the words we knew to get to you, while still having nothing to do with mountains unmoved, to reach these heights and valleys unfilled to reach these breadths. It's the words we knew to get to you. I want to be inside, your heart, because it's a weird way to start. Of course Lucas can't go through a post without talking about shit sometimes. Gotta wonder why he can't find a Zoomer Bay. Little bit weird of a situation. If you send me $5 on Cash App, I'll send you $15 for free. King Daddy Telomeres. Yeah, that sounds like a homeless man's version of the Ponzi scheme. It turns out Lucas was probably being scammed by someone. I received $700 the other day to convert to Bitcoin for work, but PayPal developed a login issue. Customer support at PayPal said it would be resolved after the system reset in two days, with my new phone number and email address, so late afternoon tomorrow. Hey again. Received the $1, so my app seems to work. One final favor. I need $2 to run another experiment with Bitcoin. Thanks again, anyone. It's work-related. Dozens of people warned him he was being scammed, but it probably happened anyway because he refuses to talk about it now. What happened with the Bitcoin? I thought you were onto something good. Sorry if it didn't work out. It didn't. Moving on. That's all you can do. I know everyone is in his friends to laugh at him, essentially, but it seems like they were trying to help him to not get scammed here. Too bad lol cows usually refuse to be helped. They need a schizo Olympics. Man, I gotta figure out a way to stay a week in Thailand. Wish I could make this board game to play and sign for you for $85. Someone get Chris Hansen. I do not trust Lucas to go to Thailand with good intentions. That would be such a red flag for him. And finally, let's hear some of what must be his doctoral thesis on age gap breeding, as he likes to call it. Even the electrons in our own bodies will reverse and spin to become positrons, and temporality will shift. We all return to mother and father. It's not the fastest or strongest sperm that won anyway. You won the sperm race because you were the shakiest baseball up against the bat. You were the one most in the groove. You were a Fibonacci 5, she was a Fibonacci 8, and Fibonacci 13 unlocked the Fibonacci gate. You won because you were the best in bed. I wouldn't lie to you. You weren't the best looking, the best swimmer, the hardest working. You were just really good at the old sex. Yeah, I feel like Lucas being born is proof that it has nothing to do with being good at sex. Maybe a sexagram of antimatter and matter went off. Maybe dark matter plays a part. Maybe a circular molecule comes into contact with a square and creates the perfect triangulation to release oxytocin. Scientists look into everything imaginable and find little shapes and shortcuts along the way. Think of what you'd do in that situation. You'd have to have her millions of ovulated nerve endings accept your smooth head and smash it open to give you both the biggest orgasms of your very brief lives, because at that point there's bigger changes to worry about. The average sperm lives five days outside the bag. The average ova lives 12 to 24 hours. It's still pretty epic. It's like dating a 20 year old when you're 200. It's even more epic than that. Sperm can live in a guy for 74 days. It's the equivalent of dating a 20-year-old when you're 2,960 years old. Oh my god, I think I'm going to have to go take a shower after reading that. Good thing I'm ending the video. But that is about all the time I have for you today. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please give it a like. If you have something to say about Lucas, or about anything else, make sure you let me hear it in the comments, because I'll be here reading them. If you're new here, consider subscribing, because my numbers are in the toilet right now, much like Lucas's brain. Big thanks also to my awesome patrons, who support me more directly over on Patreon. I'll be shouting them out as soon as it's not like the first of the month. Let me know if you want more about Lucas. I'm not sure how long it'll be before I have new material, but I do like to update people. Let them know he didn't die or anything. At least not on the outside. Well, have a great day, everyone, and I hope you learned something about creative sandwich making.